Hello, it's Theo from Theo's Tech Tips, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to a WebSocket server with a Chrome extension in Manifest version 3. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is to open up your code editor and make a new project. And the reason that connecting to a WebSocket server with a Chrome extension in Manifest version 3 is more complicated than it used to be is because Manifest version 3 uses something called service workers. And service workers have a life cycle, so they will not stay open forever, which means that your service worker could just close your WebSocket connection. And of course, the definition of a WebSocket connection is that it's a persistent connection which means it has to stay open all the time. So this might seem to be a little bit tricky, but in Chrome 116, Google allowed the feature for service workers to connect to WebSocket servers without the browser closing the WebSocket connection. But the catch is that you need to always be sending messages from the server and the client. If you don't send or receive a message within 30 seconds, the browser will close the WebSocket connection. So we need some sort of mechanism to make sure that our WebSocket doesn't get closed by the service worker. So the first thing you want to do is to make a new file called manifest.json. And the first property that we're going to add is manifest version. And we're going to set that to three. And the next property that we need is minimum Chrome version. And once again, the reason for this is because Google only allowed this in Chrome 116 and up. If the user tries to run your extension below Chrome 116, it's just going to kill the WebSocket regardless. So we need to set this property to make sure that people cannot install our Chrome extension below 116 so that we won't run into this issue. So you can just set it to 116. Now we need to give our extension a name. So I'm going to say WebSocket demo manifest v3. And we're going to set a version for our Chrome extension. So I'm going to set it to 1.0. I'm also going to set a description. And now we need to create a background key. And we're going to set this to an object. And we're going to specify service worker in here. We're going to say background.js. And after our background, we need to add an action and we're going to set the icon to icon.png. So now we need to get an image to use as our icon. So I'm just going to put an icon in here. So now we need to make a new file called background.js to use as our service worker. And the first thing we're going to do is to set our variables to hold our WebSocket and our WebSocket heartbeat interval. And now we need to make a function to connect our WebSocket. So I'm going to call it make WebSocket. And this is going to set the WebSocket variable to new WebSocket. And we can paste our address in. And now we are going to call a function called make listeners. And the next thing you need to do is to make a function to close our WebSocket. And this is just going to go WebSocket.close. And the next thing you need to do is to make a function called make listeners and the first listener we're going to make is websocket dot on open and set this to a function and we're going to console dot log connected and we're going to start our heartbeat for our websocket once again this will make sure that our websocket won't get closed by the browser the next listener we need to make is websocket dot on message and this is going to take a parameter of event and we're going to console.log event.data and this will print the message received to the console. And the next listener we need is websocket.onclose. We're going to set this to go console.log disconnected and we're going to stop the heartbeat. So the next thing we need to do is make our functions to operate our heartbeat interval. So first we're going to make a function called start heartbeat. And this is going to set WebSocket heartbeat interval to set interval to a function. And this function is going to run every 20 seconds. So we can just enter 20 seconds in milliseconds. 
And this basically means that it's going to run this function every 20 seconds to prevent our WebSocket from closing. So now we're going to go WebSocket.send and we're just going to send a text message that says heartbeat. And we're also going to print this message to the console just so that it's easier to monitor. Next, we're going to make another function called stop heartbeat. And this is simply going to clear our WebSocket heartbeat interval. So the last thing we want to do just to add a little bit of polish to our Chrome extension is to set the badge of our Chrome extension action to either on or off depending on if the WebSocket is connected or not. And this will make it super easy to see if our WebSocket is in check. So the first thing we're going to do is go chrome.action.onclicked.addListener. It's going to run a function and we want this function to basically act as a toggle. So if the action is clicked and the WebSocket is not connected, then we want to connect the WebSocket. But if we click it and the WebSocket is connected, then we want to disconnect the WebSocket and reflect it in the extension icon. So we're just going to check if the WebSocket variable is null or if the WebSocket.ready state is equal to WebSocket.closed. Then we're going to go make WebSocket and we want to set our Chrome action background color and we're going to enter the hex code for green which is 00FF00. And next we want to set the text of our Chrome action to on. And now we want to check if the WebSocket is not null and the WebSocket.ReadyState is equal to WebSocket.Open. Then we want to go close WebSocket and we want to set the badge again, but this time we're going to set it to red. So it's going to be FF0000 and we're going to set the text to off. And that's it for our WebSocket extension. So now we can just open up Chrome, go to our extensions page, make sure that developer mode is turned on and we're going to go load unpacked. We're going to find our Chrome extension and we should be able to see our action in the top right. So let's open up our service worker to keep an eye on things. So now let's start by clicking on our action and it says connected and you should see in your WebSocket server logs that there's a new connection. And after 20 seconds, we should see a heartbeat message, which will prevent the browser from closing the WebSocket. So now we can try clicking on our WebSocket again and it should say off and we should see disconnected. And this will cause the WebSocket heartbeat interval to stop running so that we're not filling our logs with bugs because there's no WebSocket connection. So now you can click it again and it works. Click it again and it disconnects. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm Theo from Theo's Tech Tips and I'll see you next time. Bye.